Theodore Roosevelt put it like this. When you play, play hard. The words ring true for Mike and Peggy Bollinger. But first, the work. They work hard, they play hard. They taught us well, work hard, then play hard. When we would go to the lakes in the summer, the first thing we would do, we got to have the yard mowed, everything put together, and then we did play hard. And I remember when we first started dating Tony and I when I was in college, I'd, I'd come visit on the weekend, and it was like nonstop, morning to sundown. I mean, you went to bed exhausted because they worked so hard. That's what they do. They work hard, and then they enjoy it. Peggy and Mike are the owners of Western Products, a tremendously successful home improvement company based in Fargo. Successful, not thanks to chance, but to hard work and a hard scrabble journey we recognize as the American dream. Didn't have, you know, hardly anything and bought the cheapest meal they could find at the grocery store. They made a rule or a deal that whenever they bought a house, the first meal, a new house, the first meal that they ate there was going to be beans and corn because that's what they could afford to eat. So they must have gone to like a carpet store and got all the squares and she hand sewed those together so they would have like decent flooring in this apartment they lived in. They bought a little business called Western Products in 1984 and grew it into the thriving family owned operation it is today. My dad makes her, has this quote, it's, success or failure in life is caused more by mental attitude than mental capability. They're a tough act to follow, you know, because they've uh, come from, the, you know, the bottom and they grinded their way to the top, you know. They aren't afraid of hard work and they know what that hard work can bring. For Mike and Peggy Bollinger, it brought the opportunity to give back, to invest in communities for which they care, like Medora. I mean, you've seen what's going on downtown and that's only going to get better. They don't talk about their donations a lot. Uh, so unless you really get to know them, you really have trouble adding it up. You might see the Bollinger name on something, but when you start to think about it and, and put it all together, you go, you just think, say, wow, isn't, isn't that remarkable? And of course, they are playing hard with their wonderful family, three daughters and 10 grandchildren. I mean, everybody loves Grandma and Grandpa. Sometimes our family can be a little bit crazy. Like all the cousins come along and we just play around. It's very loud, as he said before. <laughs> a family blessed with a kind, thoughtful, attentive Nana. Like my Nana, she always says to me, um, whenever like I sing around the house, which I kind of do a lot, she always says to me, I have like such a good voice and like that I should, um, not be as shy as I usually am to like sing. I like Nana because um, he always colors with me. When I was seven years old, my grandma got me my first sewing machine. At the lake, we'll set up like big tables and put, and everyone will like bring their sewing machines from their house and put them on the tables in the garage and then all the girls are just like sew for hours and it's really fun. She sewed her own wedding dress. I know, I think that's really cool. <laughs> She's always like joyful when we come over and when we do stuff together. And a papa who's always good for a practical joke, like this one at their home in Medora. He played a prank on all of the grandkids, um, pretending he was gonna get arrested. The police officer came and was like, like, you're gonna have to come with me, like you're in trouble, you're going to jail. And then the cop, grabbed his hands, put him in handcuffs, walked them out to his car. Everybody was freaked out. Um, all the cousins were crying. Nikki was crying. Like, it was, it was funny. Who was it? Maybe Alex was like, guys, it's okay, it's okay. Grandma will just bail him out. It's okay. <laughs> Turns out he was just going around the block and then came back <laughs> to all of us crying. He's coming out with the car laughing, and it's, it was pretty funny after. <laughs> he says, you only tease the ones you love. A family with boundless energy and joy. They have uh, given the gift of humor, um, at, for sure, uh, to my kids. Such good role models for um, just like what a, a mom and a dad or a husband and wife should be to one another. If there was a family Olympics, we would win for sure. Like... A reminder that the most savory fruits are those of labor. Uh, they do so much for Medora and so much for uh, the state of North Dakota. 
and a pair who truly embody the bully spirit. Congratulations, Mike and Peggy. Um, that, uh, that says everything. I only want to say a couple of other things. It's, uh, it's a real honor to have you guys receive this. Peggy was a board member for nine years. They're friends. Um, the town is better because of them. I used to say they kind of shamed us into cleaning up our buildings because they did such a great job with theirs. And it's true. They really influenced the way Medora looks by setting a higher standard for all of us. They've been benefactors to almost everything we've done. I did this this morning, uh, Mike and Peggy. I pulled up my phone and I can see what you've done. And 18 years you've been involved. 69 times you've made a gift. 69 times. There's hardly a project in this town. But that's important. But this is the family of honor today and the distinction. And what did they do last night? They invite the town to come to their unofficial, unlicensed bar, Wooly Boys. <laughs> and they are serving everybody. They were playing hard and having fun. Mike and Peggy, please come on up here to receive the Bully Spirit Award. Thank you, Randy. Thank you, Tim, for putting that video together. How can you not have fun with a family like that? There's some Sunday nights, we're usually all together at the lake. We all live in Fargo. And uh, how blessed are we? So many people, their children or grandchildren are all around the country. And here we are, they're all in Fargo. Two families, the two families that are here, both live in North Fargo next to us. So, But there are some Sunday nights the kids all leave the lake, and Peggy and I look at each other, and we say, Phew, let's open a bottle of wine. <laughs> so um, thank you to the Medora Foundation Board of Directors for selecting us. I mean, it really is an honor. And um, I know you're going to be uh, honoring Ed here in a few minutes for his 12 years, but uh, he's been just such a friend. And, uh, you think back, you would have never had an opportunity to get to know somebody if it wasn't for Medora. Um, it's, it's quite an honor and humbling to be part of something that Harold Schaefer had a hand in. I mean, Harold Schaefer started this. And our story about Harold Schaefer is 52 years ago, a week before we got married, there was another wedding in Bismarck and Harold knew the family real well. And we were at that wedding. And it was the first time I had ever seen a tuxedo, a man in a tuxedo. And I just, I admired the, I knew not, not much about him, but I did admire him. And he ended up buying the champagne and I probably ended up following him around all night, I don't know. But he, uh, uh, just to be part of that is, is really, an, really an honor. The past recipients, like Ralph, Emily, you know, we just would have never gotten to know you guys. And uh, um, I remember when uh, Joe Wiegand showed up and uh, we were out in the yard working and Kate was there. And the next time we came to Medora, I think Joe said to Peggy, how's Kate doing? And it's just, I mean, people are just so close and it's, it's just great to be part of this. And I guess I could sum this up by saying, we love Medora. And our grandkids love Medora. And uh, I think it was a year ago, we go to the lake on the weekend, so it's, it's hard to come out here. And we were out here on a weekend, 
And at the end of the weekend, I said to the grandkids, would you rather be at the lake or be in Medora? They all said Medora. And I think that's just so neat. Our parents, both our parents used to come to Medora and uh, it was kind of their summer highlight. And as a kid, I was out here a few times because I remember having to walk up the steps all the time. But for our parents, it was a summer highlight. We moved to Fargo, raised our family, and um, we'd, I don't think we'd been to Medora at all, that I remember. And uh, we got involved in, uh, uh, how many of you remember the Wooly Boys movie? And uh, so um, we were investors in that. And we got a phone call that they were going to be doing some filming at the Freiburg Gymnasium. And uh, so we thought, let's go to Medora for the weekend. And at the time, you had a little log cabin big enough for our family to stay in. And so we stayed there. And Randy, as passionate as he, as he is about Medora and knowing who's coming and going, uh, he caught up to us at the Pitchfork Fondue that night. And Randy being a CPA and me being a CPA, we visited for a little bit, really didn't know one another. And then later that evening at the amphitheater, here's Randy selling popcorn. And uh, I, never, uh, I never ever thought at that point in time that uh, we'd be such close friends, you and Lori. So then, um, Kind of ask, how did we end up in Medora? So we were at the musical uh, that night, and the next morning uh, we all woke up, and you know how young ladies are, they're all primping. And so Tony and I, I, actually Kelly had said, why don't we come to Medora more often? And we thought, you know, we should. And so the girls are all primping, and Tony, who was too young to primp at the time, and uh, her and I went for a walk around town. And we thought, let's see if there's anything for sale. And we ended up with that, the house we ended up with was one we were most interested in, but I had spoken to another lady who had a calling card of a, of a female um, realtor from Dickinson. And so I had that calling card and I had a, a um, Dickinson phone directory. I stapled the calling card to it. We're back in Fargo. I file it away at the office in a file that I called Medora thinking, man, maybe someday we'll buy something out here. Five months later, it was April, uh, and start of a new season, and I needed more room in my drawers at work, and I picked up this Medora file, and I said, we'll never buy anything, and I threw it in a garbage can. Then I looked at my watch, and it was, seven, it was eight o'clock in Fargo, but I'm thinking, it's only seven o'clock in Medora. It's not too, lo too late to call that lady. So I dialed her up, and it turned out that the week before, the house we ended up with went on the market, and the lady had said to me, you, uh, you can view it on the internet. And it's like, how do you do that? <laughs> and, and so we fi I figured it out, and there it is, that two rail fence. And I thought, that's the place we liked. So then the next step was getting everybody out here. There were no grandkids at the time, it's just 20 years ago. And so Peggy and I and all the daughters and the son-in-laws, we all came out here together, and I was trying to prepare probably Peggy more than the rest of them, that this isn't a very nice house. It's got 25-year-old shag carpet in it, and she had a big dog. And many of you ladies out there know you all had shag carpet rakes, and us men couldn't walk on them. And that's exactly how it was. So, so we, we got out there, and I went in the basement, and half the basement was just mud, and I came up, and the windows down there had cobwebs from 80 years ago. And Peggy looks at me and she says, you really aren't interested in buying this, are you? And I said, well, I, I think so. <laughs> and she kind of looked at me and said, this is too far from Fargo. If you buy that place, I'm not coming out there. <laughs> <laughs> so we just waited a little bit and one thing led to the next and I found somebody that could put some drain tile around the house. And uh, we ended up uh, making a deal with the lady and, and ended up actually gutting the house twice. But um, we, um, we did make, or I did make, Peggy was on a lot of them, 33 trips in like 14 months in order to uh, just get the thing in pretty good shape. And over that period of time, Randy and I became pretty good friends and, and you'd start meeting people around town and it just, it was a, it was a fun time. So I was out here on one trip and 
uh, one of the people that were working for me out here said, I heard they're tearing down the Museum of the Badlands. And I said, they'd never do that. And I got in my car and I'm ready to leave the Fargo and I thought, I better check that out just to be safe. So I went over to the office and I met um, uh, Satram. Um, Winston. Winston Satram. And I sat down with him and I introduced myself and I said, are you guys tearing down the Museum of the Badlands? And he said, yes. And I said, well, all the wood on the outside of it, what are you gonna do with it? And he said, the contractor's just gonna haul it away. And I said, well, I'd like to have it for the inside of what I'm gonna make an old time saloon. And what I'll do, I don't want it for free, I'll buy you new lumber if I can have your old lumber and kind of do a swap. So a couple of our guys, and this is in the off season, it's easy to do it, they actually drug the overhang on that through town and put it on where it says mercantile on the building and that's a, the old Playhouse Saloon. As, as Randy uh, said, um, Peggy was on the board for nine years. Uh, it was a lot of fun while well, she was on the board for nine years. I could go golfing and prairie dog hunting and enjoy Medora while well, she had to work. Um, it's, uh, we've met, just like I said earlier, we've met so many friends out here. It's just so hard to, to name them all and the grandkids love it. And um, uh, we do get crazy as a family sometime, but we do work hard and we do play hard. Um, I look at what happened in the Medora Foundation over the years, and I, th I think of Randy and Ed kind of leading the board of directors in all that you guys have accomplished in the last 20 years since we've just been here. I mean, it, it really, it is amazing, and, and uh, it's just awesome to be, uh, be around while all of that's happening. One story I'd like to tell, and this is gonna be about point-to-point -point park today, is, uh, we were out here on a weekend with the family, and um, sometimes some of the, uh, the girls leave early. Peggy and I were getting ready to go, and Randy said, I gotta show you. Over at the Schaefer Center, there's a layout of what the Point to Point Park's gonna be, of which we knew nothing about it, really, at that time, other than a comment or two. And um, so we went over there with Randy, and I think a couple of the grandkids were still around and, and went over there with us. And, he showed us what the layout was going to be, and, and there's going to be the, the water park, and there's going to be the go new mini golf course and some other things. And he never once asked us for money, nothing having to do with money. Just, he just wanted, he was excited about the point-to-point -point park and what's going to happen. And I said to Randy, and this is about the time the whole thing with the, uh, the library was taking place, and Randy's duties were going to shift quite a bit to the library. And so while we're there, I said to Randy, I said, well, Randy, if 80% if of your time is going to be with the library, you're so passionate about Medora. Look what you've done. Who's going to replace you? And uh, he really didn't have an answer. <laughs> but he did get emotional and choked up. And that just shows how much Randy is to the, to the town of Medora. So we get, went back to our place. We packed everything up started talking about it. I, I think we called him back when we were at Hebron. And we said, we'll sponsor the uh, miniature golf because we didn't like the old one. <laughs> and, and we knew it needed, it needed to go. <laughs> but uh, no, it, it, um, but that's where we got our involvement in that. And uh, it, we're just so grateful to be part of that. One last thing, if I can just take another minute. I'd like to recognize a couple here that um, they're dear to our hearts because um, growing up, they were around my parents. And they really are the spirit of Medora, like so many of you people in this room are. They've given their time, their talent, whatever they could financially to Medora. And um, I've just asked them to be here today, and I'd like Don and Delanis to stand up. Would you? Don and Delanis Eckrock. And other than that, thank you again for the award. Um, Governor Doug Burgum and First Lady Catherine, thanks for being here. Special. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Oh, it's humbling.